Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how I'm going to paint the awesome Marauder Bomber miniature from Aeronautica Imperialis. It's going to be a two-part video as I found there was tons of stuff I wanted to cover. When I got back into the hobby, uh, someone pointed me towards this new uh, arm of GW called Forgeworld. I checked it out and I fell in love with this Marauder Bomber miniature. And I never really had the sort of time or inclination or money or whatever to pick up the big 28mm version. But as you'll know from some of our other videos, I'm a really big fan of small scale miniatures. So when they brought it out for Aeronautica Imperialis, I was in. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you all how I'm going to go about painting it. So let's get on with it. I was a bit stumped as to what colours to paint the miniatures. Um, my knowledge of World War II and, and so forth is pretty much listening to Sabaton and playing the old game of War Thunder. So I needed to reach out to a plain nerd friend of mine, and I thought, Dan, from the Two Peas podcast, he loves that stuff. And he was super helpful with giving me some ideas as to why you got certain colours on the planes, where they were, what they meant, so on and so forth. And he suggested, why don't I paint the top camouflage like the bases uh, on my Titans? What lovely stuff. And then he said, the underneath go for more of, you know, sort of bruised sky feel. I thought, fantastic, I can use the umber, the yellow ochre, and the dark red ochre that I use on my basing and apply that across the miniature. So all I needed to do was find some acrylic paints that could pretty much match these pigments that I used. So thanks a lot, Dan. First up, I'm going to base coat the whole model in Vallejo model colour, Burnt Umber. I primed the model grey, uh, Halfus Grey Primer, get hold of here in the UK, it's an automotive primer. Um, no reason other than I'd run out of my black primer. Um, doesn't really make any difference, uh, in my opinion, on this sort of model and this sort of scheme. When you're thinning Vallejo model colours to go through the airbrush, you're going to be looking at probably at least two drops of thinner to paint uh, if you're going to be spraying like I am here at 25 psi in a 0.4mm needle and nozzle airbrush. Uh, and as usual I'm using our Cult of Paint Infinity from Harder and Steenbeck. But I wanted it thin enough that I could apply two or three coats to get a nice smooth finish over the grey. I'm not going to go overboard with highlighting on this model, um, creating loads of rendering. I think it, sometimes it looks a bit weird on this scale. So I'm just going to go for a nice general overall highlight uh, of a lighter brown and I'm going to use Tamiya Flat Earth here. Make sure when we're using Tamiya paints that we use the correct Tamiya thinners to go with them. They're a solvent based paint, so we can't use our normal airbrush thinners with them. So I've made sure the top of the plane is a fair bit lighter, and they're on the sides, just angling it slightly so I catch the top of the sides and make them a touch lighter than the bottom. As I say, nothing crazy, and to be honest, with these airbrush stages, if you haven't got an airbrush, just rattle can it the brown, uh, and then the camo colour, or even just brush paint it but the airbrush allows me to get nice smooth layers of paint, quite a few different tones even just using one or two paints. Uh, it means we don't obscure any of the detail or anything like that. But because the layers are so thin, it's important we let them dry because they can be quite fragile. Once I've got that brown base down, now it's time to break out the masking putty. I've used this stuff for a few years, it's Camouflage Masking Putty by Ammo by MIG. It's an oil-based putty, uh, you can see it's black in colour. So it's not exactly the same as using like Play-Doh or, or Silly Putty, behaves a little bit differently. We'll tear a piece off straight out of the pot. Straight out of the pot, it's it's fairly you know tough and when you pull it apart it just snaps. It's tougher than say blue tack or something like that. It just sort of snaps. But if you need it for say, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, just warm it up. Uh, it becomes much more malleable uh, and we can really sort of stretch it out and it's, it's, it's fantastic for creating all kinds of weird shapes with camouflage. You can see they're way more stretchy than it was before. And whilst it adheres very well to the models, it's not sticky, uh, if that makes sense. So you're not making loads of mess like sometimes you do with blue tack and stuff like that. And it also means it's not going to pull the paint off the model. Now I'm by no means the best resource for camouflage patterns don't really understand it bar the point that obviously it's meant to make you harder to make out your outline and therefore hit the important bits as far as I can gather so if you care about that kind of thing just go and use the internet or your books for resources and um, there's some amazing schemes out there all I did was I saw a, a 
pattern that I liked that you, you'd see on things like Lancaster bombers and, and Spitfires. I thought, I like that camo pattern. I'm going to sort of riff off that. And all we do is just start applying it over the top of the plane here. So I've not glossed the paint or anything like that. I'm not protecting it, doing anything like that. Just breaking off pieces of the putty, stretching some of them out, and just creating these random shapes. And all I'd say to bear in mind at this stage is obviously the masking, the area that we're masking off is going to remain this colour. So consider how much area you're going to mask off. If you want a more or less a 50-50 representation between the colours you're going to use, do bear that in mind. I've gone over the whole model and done it. You can see I've left this for about 10 minutes. And what the putty starts to do is sort of settle. You can see it's got a lot shinier and smoother. And it just starts to settle uh, and sort of conform more to the surfaces that you're laying it over, which means you can get really, really nice sort of demarcation between the, the two colours. All I'm doing now is just checking around any areas where there's like a significant change in direction on the panels. I'm just pushing it in with the back of a paintbrush here just to make sure that it's nice and flush uh, and we haven't got any gaps underneath. If we do get slightly soft uh, blends between the two colours, it's really not going to bother me at this scale. If I was painting a, a larger scale, like a 28mm version of this model, or a scale model kit, um, I might be a tiny bit more careful. But I've used this putty a fair few times and it's it's really good. So now I've loaded up my dark red ochre colour, and for this I've used uh, Vallejo Panzer Aces Shadows Flesh. Uh, it's pretty close to my pigment. So again, thinned it down. It's, it's, a mod, it's essentially it's a model colour. It's a, a range of Vallejo model colour paints. I haven't thinned it down too much. Uh, I wanted to achieve a good coverage in maybe two coats with this colour. Also, what's important is that we don't use a hairdryer as I so often do to dry the paint. We don't use that between layers of this paint because obviously that heat will affect the putty. and We don't want to change the shape of that putty. So I'm doing this all over the top of the plane and then down the sides as well. And now the really fun part, you get to peel it off. As I said, it's not really sticky. So once you get a good bit in your fingers, the whole piece just comes off really, really easily. And when I was doing the practice piece for this, um, I was very happy at this stage. Uh, everything we're going to do in this video and the, and the following one, I just find really fun. Uh, it's very relaxing painting. We're using a lot of different techniques and we're using a lot of different products. But generally, it's, it's all very forgiving. It's all quite straightforward. Um, but you end up getting what I think is a really cool result. Something I first experienced when I painted the um, Adeptus Titanicus Titans, you know, was, was this idea of having these awesome models that in the past were, you know, only available as massive resin kits that cost a fortune and, and would take hundreds of hours in some cases to paint. Whereas actually now I can look over and there's a shelf full of Reavers and Warhounds, and, you know, and now I've got this Marauder Bomber underway that I've wanted to paint for over 10 years now um so yeah really really fun project this and then any areas where it's not coming off just get your tweezers in there and you can pick the smaller pieces off but again do be careful we don't want to scratch that paint because it is fragile because it's so thin lovely stuff temptation now obviously to fly it around making noises but we're gonna stay strong that would be the treat for completing it. When you've got all the putty uh, at the end, you can just put it back together. Um, I don't quite know how this works. Presumably it's to do with the oil or whatever in the, in the base, um, but the paint will just come off it and just pop it back in the tin and you can reuse it. I, I must have done, gosh, 20 plus models with this tin, like large tank models. And it, you know, it looks good as new. For the bottom of the plane, I love it when you see the schemes where they have a, a lighter underneath than they do on the top. So I've taken a Dunkelgelb base by Amma by Mig. as sort of a, a dark yellow ochre colour. I'm just going to hit the bottom of the plane with this now. We don't need to mask anything off. If we get a tiny bit of overspray, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and because of the way the model is, or the, the plane itself is, I guess, uh, it's very easy not to hit the air as we don't want to. I just noticed I'd had a tiny bit of the uh, putty left on there, so I just peeled that off. 
guess that would be a tip with this whole project is do take your time between stages and make check the model over make sure you've done everything you want before you move on to that next step and once i'm happy with the underneath of the plane i'm gonna come up the sides of it sort of a third of the way up perhaps so I've got one pass here with the colour. Um, I don't dilute this Ammo by MIG paint at all for the airbrush. It fires through absolutely great at 25 psi and, and for what I want it to do. Let that dry slightly before I apply the second layer. Just make sure you're doing even layers on each side so we get a consistent colour. And I looked at a few reference photos and I loved the way that this lighter colour sort of faded into the, or the camera faded into this lighter colour. It's something I wanted to try and achieve. On this model. Now we take uh, Dunkelgelb Light Base, so it's the next colour up in the uh, Dunkelgelb set, the uh, modulation set. Slightly lighter, slightly more desaturated. Just like I did earlier with that flat earth over the burnt umber. Not worrying too much about, you know, rendering and all the rest of it, just, just getting a little bit of highlight on there. Now I take a bunch of oil paints. I've got dust, field grey, which is almost a green colour, Industrial Earth, which is a dirty brown green colour. Uh, Dark Rust, which is my red ochre, effectively. That's all by Abtalung 502. And then I've got Yellow Ochre here by Windsor & Newton. Once the acrylic paint's dried underneath, I'm not varnishing it, I'm not doing anything like that, now we can have a little bit of fun. And this is one of the oldest techniques in, in miniatures painting. It's been around for, for donkeys. Um, it's... It's kind of, I get oil paint modulation, oil paint rendering, whatever you want to call it. But what we're going to try and achieve here is to get a little bit of motion in the plane and a little bit more interest in the armour colour. So I've taken the red ochre colour, the dark rust, and put that over the red areas of the camo. Then I've taken the field grey and put that over the, the grey-brown colour that I've got. Then I'm taking the industrial earth, which is the, the dirty colour. Again, put your dots all over that. And then last up, I'm going to take the dust or the, the off-white colour. I'm going to do a few dots of that. Also quite a cool idea for possible future camo patterns. I like these dots um, over that camo underneath. But this is just neat undiluted oil paint straight over the dry acrylic. Then we take a large flat brush, soft flat brush, it's important. We dip it in some mineral spirits. I use Winston Newton Sansador. We touch off the excess, and really we want the brush to just be a little bit damp. We don't want too much paint on there. We're not a thinner on there. We're not looking to remove the paint here. What I'm looking to do is just effectively create tons and tons of very, very faint streaks. So I'm always moving in the same direction from the front of the plane towards the back, and I'm pulling the paint in that direction. And we go over and we soften it and we fade it out and we blend it together it will just start to create a lot more interest in that paintwork. By all means, skip this stage if you don't particularly like working with oils or you can't be bothered to do it. Um, but for me, it's, it's one of my favourite stages. And we're going to be doing a lot more oil work uh, later on in this project too. And for the underneath, I'm going to use the industrial earth, so the dirty brown colour. I'm going to use the yellow ochre instead in this case, and I'm going to use the dust again. To do the whole plane like this, I, I will work in segments exactly like I'm showing you here. It's probably looking at taking less than 15 minutes. It's really not a long process. Um, and this is a very, very simple version of the oil paint rendering. As I say, we're going to do plenty more work with oils later on in the project. You notice I've been relatively generous with the lighter colours, whereas sometimes I, I shy away from them when I'm doing this kind of thing. Um, I really wanted that them to show up a little bit more. My brush is too dry there, because it's just sort of smearing the paint rather than thinning it out. So apply a little bit more thinner, touch the excess off. That's a bit more like it. And even though the thinner hasn't fully evaporated and left the final finish, you can see quite clearly when we look underneath the plane here the difference between the, the wing that I'm working on here and the colour that we have uh, over the rest of the underneath. Just start to see that 
that's weathering that you know that motion starting to come into the model you take a look at the top you can see it a bit more there on that right wing compared to the left one really fun technique I've left it to dry for an hour or so as long as it's touch dry you can get a hair dryer on it you want leave it overnight really doesn't matter or just go straight ahead and varnish over it so here I'm using a gloss varnish and this is to prepare us for the next few stages I use Vallejo polyurethane gloss uh, or Amma by MIG Lucky uh, gloss both brands I really like they both do a good job but you use whatever you like in your airbrush or use a rattle can really doesn't matter now I wanted to pin wash the model to bring sort of definition and separation uh, between all the parts and ideally I wanted to try and have one color that I could just use to pin wash the entire model with and there's a, an enamel wash uh, by MIG called uh, Starship Filth I think it's called Starship Wash that's what it's called it'll flash up on screen anyway uh, and it's this lovely sort of green grey blue brown color um, muddy color which means that you can use it over a lot of different colors so in this case I could use it against the red the brown the ochre and it, it would work well so I'm just working my way around the entire model you know the pin washing process once that was dried, I left that maybe an hour to dry, I went in and I applied my decals. Uh, I'll put the link up to the dedicated decal video uh, rather than you seeing me do it on, on every single video. I wanted to do a couple of ones that sort of look more like the World War II style planes, so like the little numbers and things like that, but then I, I wanted to add a little bit more uh, colour in there and because I'm linking this to uh, the Legio Kritos Iron Warriors sort of project, um, I thought it might be fun to use some hazard stripes uh, as decoration on there. Um, not only does that tie it into my force, um, I also think it, it clearly makes it look like a, a warhammer. Uh, it's the same as sticking skulls all over it, isn't it? Um, 30k and 40k, bang some hazard stripes on it, and, uh, and I think you know which universe that you're in. We're going to leave it here for this video, so I hope you've enjoyed these techniques uh, and these products. In the next video, we're going to look at basically painting all the rest of the details on the video. So the engines, uh, the canopies, the weapons, uh, and tons of weathering and oil work. Really excited. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what else you might like to see from the aeronautica range in the comments. And I'll see you next time.